edition of the Market Tech Group Minute. Today, we are pleased to be joined by Marcelo Cloez from BioMary, who is he's the Senior Director of Strategy at Bacterial Infections. Uh, Marcelo, uh, thank you uh, very much for joining us today. Uh, You're welcome. The, the term thermonestics is, uh, is fairly new. Can you explain uh, what it is and how the term uh, came about? Yeah, sure. Well, theranostic actually, uh, um, there, there are several definitions of theranostics, and uh, uh, the most agreed right now uh, over there is that a theranostic is a diagnostic test that helps clinicians make the right therapeutic decision uh, for the right patient. Uh, uh, that means that uh, we like to see, uh, we like to say in Biomerieu that it is the right therapy for the right patient uh, at the right time of, uh, given at the right time. Uh, that means that um, it is a personalized approach to uh, therapy. That is also the reason why theranostic is also known as personalized medicine. And uh, it is giving the patient the uh, opportunity of receiving the, really the drug he or she needs, as opposed to uh, receiving a very uh, excessively generic approach to a given condition. Is there an example that you might be able to give us? Yeah, sure. Uh, uh, the the, uh, the example that is that, that became the poster child for this is the uh, Herceptin uh, uh, um, and the HER2 new uh, uh, test that is associated to that. That is allowing a, a, a better um, choice of the patient for uh, prescribing the drug. I see. Yeah. And how widely adopted is uh, is Theranastic? Well, for the moment, it is uh, uh, for for those. For those associations of drugs with uh, uh, diagnostics, which is from this point on, we are going to refer uh, uh, as uh, as this for, uh, as companion diagnostics. For those companion diagnostics where uh, the value has been very very clearly defined, the adoption is immediate. Uh, the reimbursement is uh, obtained um, very quickly, and uh, the value is tremendous. Um, precisely, that is the problem of adoption. You have to demonstrate that for a given patient uh, running a companion diagnostic for a given drug makes sense. It is addressing the exact therapeutic problem that the patient is uh, ongoing and uh, that the economic equation makes sense. If all those three elements are there, um, it would be a smooth ride. I see. And what about uh, uh, patient privacy concerns? Are there any issues uh, surrounding that? Yes, there are many because in general, and this is another important component that has to be included in the equation here, most of the times a theranostic test implies uh, doing some sort of genetic testing. And a genetic testing can, be, uh, um, can raise concerns because it is at a certain point revealing the nature of your genetic condition, and not everybody is happy with, is happy with uh, revealing, revealing quote-unquote publicly some genetic conditions. Mm -hmm. um, so privacy is extremely important in the equation here as well because the success of the, uh, um, of the, uh, of the um, association between a therapeutic and a companion diagnostic is ensured if and only if the privacy of the genetic information disclosed is going to remain precisely private. Mm -hmm. I see. So what would you say the main benefits are for patients uh, who are treated uh, with, uh, with uh, this method compared to a traditional treatment method? Yeah, uh, that, is, that, is the fantastic, that is the fantastic part in the, uh, in the theranostic story because uh, um, Let's put the example of something that is very, uh, uh, very core to the Biomerieu uh, strategy, which is infectious diseases. Mm -hmm. You can give a patient a number of different drugs in order to uh, resolve an infectious disease condition. But if you are giving the right drug, thanks to a companion diagnostic test, you are going to make sure that the patient, first of all, will be healed from his or her condition, and B, you are going to avoid the huge collateral effects that a more generic uh, uh, drug or a more aggressive drug or a more non-specific drug will have had on his or her uh, uh, fundamental 
condition. The other benefit here, and that is also extremely important to understand, is that the benefit is not only for the patient uh, and not only for the diagnostic industry, the benefit is tremendous also for pharma industries because several drugs that were considered non-effective were considered non-effective only because those drugs were being given to a patient population that was not the right one. Mm -hmm. Therefore, by picking up the right pharmacognostic approach, selecting upfront which are going to be the good respondent to a given drug, precisely drugs that were considered that were considered not good um, are being uh, reanalyzed by uh, pharma mm -hmm. and are, be, are being resubmitted for FDA clearance hand in hand with a companion diagnostic. So the benefits are multiple for the patient, for the pharma, uh, for the diagnostics, uh, but fundamentally indeed for the patient. I see. And, and what about uh, uh, the ability also to reduce maybe uh, adverse drug effects? Is there, is there a component there as well? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. However, uh, uh, in one of the most promising fields for pharmacy, which is cancer, it is important to understand that somewhat uh, some key uh, um, adverse effect of very aggressive um, oncology drugs are somewhat unavoidable. So theranostics in some cases is not about eliminating adverse effect, mm -hmm. but is guaranteeing that those adverse effects will not be, in, will not be uh, uh, exposed to a given patient for nothing, which is a, a fundamental part in the uh, cost-benefit equation as well. I see. And it, it sounds like uh, uh, this may be uh, uh, more complex for to receive uh, uh, market approval for a theragnostic uh, a product compared to a, a traditional drug or, or even a regular diagnostic device. So what role uh, are regulatory agencies going to play? Well, in some cases it might be more difficult. In some, in some others it is going to be exactly the opposite. Um, when the regulatory agencies will see that for a pre-screened group of patients, the drug is going to have a good level of uh, uh, efficacy, then on the contrary, the process will be fundamentally enhanced uh, for the drug and uh, collaterally as well for the uh, diagnostic part of the uh, theranostic process because the regulatory agencies will understand very quickly that the drug together with the companion diagnostic is going to be way more beneficial for the patient than if the drug was, go was, was pr uh, prescribed on a completely blindly basis. And do you think it's going to be uh, the same or different? Uh, you know, uh, you, you know, you have the benefit of, of working in the U.S., but uh, from uh, from a, uh, a French company. So, uh, are there going to be differences? You think in the in the European Union versus in the U.S.? Um, that remains to be seen. We, in principle, don't think so. Uh, because the process of approving a given drug is pretty homogeneous in different countries. Um, uh, and we are of the opinion that uh, if the FDA, with the hugely stringent condition uh, uh, they have for approving uh, uh, drugs uh, and diagnostics, is in the process of understanding more and more the theranostic piece and the personalized medicine piece, uh, this is going to certainly be followed by other regulatory agencies in the world, for sure. I see. And uh, let's talk a little bit about reimbursement. What, what challenges do you think uh, there will be, uh, will companies face in, in getting proper reimbursement for uh, yeah, their uh, that is That is an excellent question. Uh, and, and it has been tackled uh, uh, fantastically in a great personalized medicine conference that was held uh, a couple of weeks ago uh, um, in uh, Harvard Medical School, for which Biomerieux has been uh, a silver sponsor and uh, has played a, a key role on it. There has been a presentation, there has been a round table in, in that uh, personalized medicine conference, which was about um, precisely this point. 
uh, uh, how the payers are reacting uh, to reimburse tests that involves uh, personalized medicine, that involves companion diagnostics, that involves diagnostics. And one of the panelists has given a, 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 um, um, a presentation with three bullet points that were absolutely uh, pertinent for this situation. He said, number one, the, um, the uh, economic equation has to make sense. In other words, if the companion diagnostic is going to be outrageously expensive without seeing a good cost-benefit equation, it is not going to fly. The other component that has to be taken into account in the cost-benefit analysis is that probably the cost of the drug and the companion uh, um, might not necessarily replace other costs uh, uh, down the pike. But as long as the um, therapeutic cost-benefit analysis makes sense, we are open to um, consider reimbursement. The second point he mentioned was that the, re the, um, the payers have to be made available all the clinical information available in order to understand the clinical setting of the disease, how that disease evolves with the uh, uh, proposed drug, with the proposed companion diagnostic, and how that concrete benefit is translating into an improvement of the patient's condition. Mm -hmm. That was another of the points that uh, um, that panelist raised very uh, interestingly in his presentation. The third point is that obviously um, the theranostic um, drug companion diagnostic tandem that uh, is going to be submitted for a reimbursement has to have clinical relevance and impact on therapy, which is, which is pretty much obvious, but sometimes the industry has seen cases where the clinical relevance was not very high in the, uh, um, in, in the particular situation, and therefore getting reimbursement uh, has not um, has not been uh, has not been obtained, and the poster child for this is the case of warfarin. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the case of warfarin, but concretely speaking, warfarin is metabolized by the CYP uh, um, uh, um, metabolism chain, and some of the CYP uh, um, uh, metabolisms have been very well explained by, uh, by pharmacogenomics. Some others not. 100% of the situations are not explained with the analysis of the CYP uh, um, metabolism. And therefore, the payers have been very clear. We are not going to reimburse this until the clinical relevance and the impact on, on therapy is very clearly demonstrated. I see. And uh, you mentioned a couple couple clinical areas. Uh, so, w which ones do you think uh, are most promising uh, for applying theragnostics uh, in the near future? Um, and you know, the, the the companion question to that is, what additional clinical applications will uh, 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 be beneficial in the long term? Yeah. Uh, well, clearly, the number one application that everybody is seeing out there uh, uh, taking off seriously is oncology. Mm -hmm. That is that is very clear. Uh, another one that is uh, potentially holding uh, uh, promise is cardiovascular. Um, concretely speaking, as I, as I said before, if the warfarin test, uh, if the companion test for warfarin uh, is going to get uh, more clinical evidence that um, it will explain close to 100% of the cases of bleeding after warfarin, therefore that test will fly. Um, following that same avenue, we are hearing more and more uh, potential um, companion diagnostic being asked for clopidogrel, or what is called also the super aspirin, because the possibility of bleeding events in those uh, uh, anti-aggregation uh, therapies is significant, and therefore predicting the response of those drugs in a given patient is an important piece of information. But as I said before, uh, uh, infectious disease is one um, 
one avenue that we as Biomerieux uh, are pursuing very, very aggressively and very, very intensively. Uh, for example, measuring the antibody levels in certain patients for, uh, for certain uh, um, infectious disease condition is going to be uh, is going to be seen more and more often as potential companion diagnostic for uh, addressing certain big and met needs in hospital acquired infections. And, and do you believe that the, that the uh, partnership between drug companies and diagnostic companies uh, uh, will, will become more common, or will each company, uh, each type of company, kind of diversify on their own and, and develop their own uh, theragnostics? No, no, I don't think uh, I don't think this is going to be an individual game, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and we as Biomerie, we don't think we don't think so either. We think that uh, this is typically uh, a field of the industry where, where the partnership has to be very clearly defined. Um, the development of the drug has to go hand in hand with the development of the companion diagnostic for therapeutic reasons, for uh, pharmacological reasons, uh, but more importantly for uh, regulatory reasons. As long as the regulatory authority will see uh, the clear link between the uh, drug and the diagnostic, uh, the approval will be easier and therefore the association well upfront in the drug and diagnostic development process of a pharma company and of a diagnostic company uh, is, in our opinion, uh, absolutely key to guarantee the success of the drug, the diagnostic, and the uh, association for getting a better healthcare. I see. And, and how would you suggest uh, uh, companies that are, are uh, on their own right now who want to get involved in, in uh, theragnostics, how, how do you suggest they get together? Well, um, there are a number of forums uh, out there which are increasing in number. For example, the, uh, uh, the Personalized Medicine Conference uh, that I have just mentioned in uh, Harvard Medical School has been a fantastic forum for pharmas and diagnostic companies to get together and to uh, start thinking about potential uh, um, investigational avenues to work together, um, opportunities like that. I think that also the pharma companies are more proactively seeking out uh, the advice of diagnostic companies in order to try to understand what the other universe is about because it is true that the pharma company has processes and has uh, um, operational standards that are completely different from the diagnostic companies and vice versa. So it is about dialogue, it is about partnership, it is about understanding each other, and it is about, uh, um, it is about um, putting resources together in order to develop things that are going to, again, uh, hopefully improve substantially uh, how the healthcare will be delivered. Very good. Well, Marcelo, thank you very much for joining us today. Appreciate your help again. You're very welcome. My pleasure.